let's take a moment and look at our student engagement strategies. And these are just some ways that you can make sure that our students are really thinking about and processing what we're talking about in the classroom. So these are just some basic ones that you could implement no matter what tech tool that you're planning to use. But we'll go over a few as we go through this uh, slide, through these slides. So a couple of different uh, quotes to kind of think of. The first one is Fisher, Fry, and Hattie, uh, and they said, engaging student engagement is more than just cataloging who is turning in their assignments or leaning forward in their seats with their eyes on the teacher. We all know that we have those superstar students that get straight A's and everything that just uh, are really going through the motions to make sure that we're pl they're pleasing their teacher and getting the work in. And there's others that really put their passion and heart into everything that they do. And then there's those students that, you know, sometimes hand in work or sometimes don't and those students who are completely disengaged and we have to think about how we're going to hit all of them uh, Walt Disney once said we keep moving forward opening new doors and doing things because we're curious and curiosity keeps leading us down new paths so this is just a reminder that with everything we do in the classroom we really want our students to want to be curious and to keep asking those questions because they want to know more so when we're using educational technology, so this is really where we're tying those tech tools into what we're doing in the classroom, we have to think about uh, how the tech is being used. The first big question is, is the tech being useful or is it a distraction? For example, let's say you have uh, students that if they answer five or six math questions right, they get to a game. Uh, and then they play the game and they stay on the game until it tells them they have to answer more math questions. So they rush through those math questions to get to the game. That's a distraction. But if they're using that technology to be able to communicate with somebody, to think critically, or they're using it in a way that they couldn't do without the technology, that's when we're no we know that the technology is useful. The next thing we have to think about it when we're talking about engagement with ed tech is who is doing the work. If you're putting them on a program that uh, just does repetition, repeats uh, questions over and over until they've mastered the skill and move on, uh, you're really not thinking about engagement. You're, you're giving them the skills they need. They might need the practice. There's nothing wrong with those kind of activities. Um, but if that's the only reason we're using technology, you're really not fostering engagement. You're just uh, having students kind of walk through the process till they get the score you want and then moving on. And then the final one is student agency. And what we mean by that is the students should have some choice and some voice in what they're doing. So are they given options? You know, some students would rather de, uh, uh, you know, shut down the technology and do something uh, like a poster or actually write an essay. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that if they're showcasing their learning in that way. Um, are, they, are they able to use their voice uh, instead of walking around the room waiting for students to raise their hands and calling on the same three students? Are you using technology to make sure that every student in your room has a voice? If you're doing those things, then yeah, use the technology. Uh, if you're not, or you're finding that the technology is a distraction or is doing most of the work for the student, or the student is just kind of going through the motions and disengaged, then maybe we have to rethink of how we're using that technology in our classroom. So take a moment and think about your favorite toy. For me, um, it was Light Bright, which was just uh, put in the Toy Hall of Fame. And I absolutely love the Evil Knievel, uh, you know, wind up motorcycle toy. And I would play with these toys for hours. And I love them because it allowed me to be creative. It allowed me to try to think of different ways that I could make that motorcycle drive. Um, I really wanted it to do the stunts that the commercial showed that I could never figure out. Um, so that you could definitely think about, um, you know, what you used and how you used your favorite toys and think about how you can bring those kind of things into your classroom. Now think about your favorite school activity. Um, maybe for you it was music class or maybe it was going to PE. For me, I absolutely loved it when our teachers engaged us in the stories that we're reading. So I remember reading the Phantom Tollbooth and my teacher completely transformed the classroom so that each section of the classroom, every corner of the class was a different part of the book. So when we're, we were reading that part of the story, we all went over to that corner and we could be immersed in it. And I absolutely loved that. So that engagement was there because we were walking through something um, together and I could use that with my imagination. All right, so think about it for you. This was mine, was that Phantom Tollbooth kind of story that I just told you. But uh, think about your favorite school memory and what was it about it and how can you harness that engagement for uh, your classrooms? 
So research, research has demonstrated that engaging students in the learning process does increase their attention uh, and focus. It motivates them to practice higher level critical, critical thinking skills and promotes meaningful learning experiences. So I gave you uh, the article from the Center for Teaching and Learning if you're interested in learning more about this research. But we know that if we can get the students to want to do the work, their motivation is going to be higher, but also the way they learn is going to be much better and it's going to be much more meaningful uh, to them in the learning. So there are some rules you want to think about when you're when you're thinking about student engagement. You absolutely should set expectations. Students need to know what the rules are. What are the parameters? What can they do? What should they do? You know, what should they not do? Make sure that there's some design for participation. Are they going to be uh, typing something on a computer? Are they going to be creating post-it notes? Are they going to be um, you know, just having small group conversation or little campfire conversations? Whatever you are going to do, make sure that that design uh, has options for our students in the classroom. And you wanna be consistent. Students thrive on routine. They need to know that it's a safe place and you're not going to shift everything on the dime. Um, you know, day to, from day to day. So schedule that, that engagement, make sure that the students are aware of the process. When and how do you use the technology? You wanna use technology when you're doing any kind of design. Again, there's nothing wrong with them doing, uh, you know, a poster paper, but if that's all you allow them to do, that's where the problem comes in. Give them the option. You can do a digital poster, you can do a, a poster on paper, you can do an old fashioned diorama, or you can create a uh, virtual world on Minecraft, whatever it happens to be. The idea is that the outcome should showcase the learning. It's not so much how they, um, how they do it, it's more of do they show that they've done the learning that is needed. Um, you want to always encourage creativity. Somewhere around third grade studies show that students stop thinking of themselves as creative beings, but they're, they are incredibly creative and we want to encourage that in the classroom. We want to think about authentic experiences. So bringing in experts or having the students solve real world problems is really going to help them want to do the work. It's going to help them be engaged. And then anytime you can do collaborative work is great. Now, if you have introverts in your classroom, and I always want to take a moment here because I, I think we sometimes forget about the introverts. They may struggle in a collaborative classroom if they're always doing group work. So make sure that you're offering some choice and some opportunity uh, for your students to kind of disengage and re regroup if that's what they need. Um, maybe parts of their activities can be independent um, or you're giving them some options. So that way we are meeting the needs of all of our students. Some examples of what this could look like. Um, I mentioned in one of the other videos about the cybersecurity takeover day, and that's what you see is the students um, showcasing what they know, playing the, the Jenga trivia game. Um, they're doing collaborative activities where they're doing a visual representation of learning by writing on the whiteboard. Um, you're seeing the problem solving between these two little girls. And then um, as often as you can use manipulatives in your class, we got to work on those fine motor skills with our students. We want to make sure that we're giving them some hands on activities. Uh, I know that no matter what grade I go into, if I bring Legos, I'm going to get a higher level of engagement because the students love to build. So in the little videos, uh, you hear some uh, some conversations happening. So this is when you use that technology. So you can use it for the hook. You're getting them excited about an activity. And here are the students were writing down um, good behavior versus bad behavior online. And they knew that when they completed this activity, they were going to get to use the robot to be able to showcase their learning. Uh, you could use it for exploration. The, the students you heard at the bottom were practicing their Spanish by using the Sphero robot to drive around the map. And uh, they were counting um, as they were going through. And then they were actually naming the locations as the robot would land on uh, locations in a later lesson. Uh, you could do it as an exit ticket, showing what you know. This uh, little boy was a pre preschool uh, student that was coming to kindergarten, uh, but was doing a couple weeks in the summer uh, to get ready and was doing a coding game and was having success very quickly with it uh, and was pretty excited about it. And then the student uh, at the bottom just loved to draw. So uh, he was very excited about the drawing activity that we did. 
you want to make sure that the activities that you're doing are authentic. So in this activity, these are fifth graders and they're uh, connected with some students around the world uh, uh, talking about how to be safe online. And uh, they're students from India and England and, uh, you know, New York State, all across uh, different places. And uh, the students were having a conversation virtually while the, the students were talking virtually. The students in the classroom were practicing what it would be to tweet live. So they had a Google Doc and they were writing inside their box their learning. And then the teacher was pulling the ones that they that thought were great and then posting those actually on Twitter. And then as the students learned parts of what digital citizenship means, they were filling out the poster board to uh, to capture the words that were being talked about on this uh, on this uh, webinar. Um, so here's some things you can try. Um, you can open up this uh, Padlet and you can write a meme. And this could be something you do for SEL check-ins. You could do this for how they're feeling about their learning. You could do this as an exit ticket. Um, you can just grab these types of pictures and have the students have some fun with it. So you'll see some examples out there, some practice. You can grab those pictures, um, you know, what they were just found on the internet um, using a safe search. So they, uh, they, you know, you, you can certainly find some yourself and do these kind of activities with your students. One of my students' favorite things that we've done is I'll ask them to tell me something boring about themselves. I'll do this as an opening slide on a Nearpod or um, maybe a writing assignment on a day when I couldn't be there. So it was something they did with a sub. Um, sometimes they were just capturing their learning on Post-its and then we would post those informa that information somewhere. Um, and the boring things could be like, I don't like mayonnaise. You know, it could be something as simple as that. You could have them create an image about it or you could just capture that as you're going through the day. You can always do would you rather activities with your students. On the screen, you'll see some digital citizenship ones for would you rather, but there's also plenty if you go online and just Google would you rather for students, you're going to find lots of activities. This is a great way to build community, to get that engagement. Um, listening to your students is going to help build that community, so they're going to feel that sense of belonging. Another great activity to do with your students is called the three things uh, activity. And this is a great one for SEL. They actually uh, have done studies that if you spend every day thinking three things about them, about yourself that was positive, you're actually going to be in a better mindset. It, cr it creates positivity for you. So ask them, what's three great things that happened today? With the littles, it could be, I tied my shoes all by myself. I um, got to school on time. I had a Twinkie with my with my lunch, whatever it happens to be. It doesn't make a difference what it is. It's just something that they consider positive. Um, you could have them write three things that they learned that day or three things they still wonder or three things that they're hoping that they get to, to uh, do. This could be a little bit tied into goal setting. And then you could ask them, write down three questions you have based on what we did today. Um, that way you're putting the learning back on them and they're starting to critically think and reflect on what they've learned. Uh, I mentioned in, in a prior video that uh, virtual field trips are great. Google Arts and Culture has a ton of them. Students love them. You can take screenshots of the virtual field trip as you're going through and ask them to, you know, um, I would use it in Nearpod and maybe put a draw it slide or a collaborate board. You could bring it into Padlet or a Google slide and have the students write about what they learned, what they're curious about. Again, you're just making that learning um, or showcasing that learning in a, in a tangible way. Uh, there's some resources for you, some activity calendars, some uh, some resources, some activities, some uh, fun things that you can do with your students. So uh, you could take a peek at all the resources on your own time. But I just wanted to give you a quick overview of some of the strategies that will really work for helping your students feel more motivated to want to be in your class every day. <laughs>